Hey everyone, welcome to the video series of Airflow. Hope you guys are doing well and staying safe. In today's video, we're going to talk about the default arguments and the scheduling of Airflow DAGs in detail. So without further ado, let's start. As we all are aware, default arguments are the parameters uh, passed to the task constructor or the, or the operator. We can have multiple tasks within a DAG, so we have to define these parameters again and again. So to avoid repeating the same task parameters, we define default arguments. We define default uh, these default argument as a dictionary object in our DAG. As you can see here in the uh, in the sample code on the screen, like this is the default argument. Okay, and it can contain any parameter which is accepted by operators. In the on the screen, you are seeing the limited ones, but we can have any parameters which is accepted by uh, operators. They are typically passed as a DAC, like typically passed to the DAC constructor using the default underscore args parameter, which we can see here. So this is the default uh, parameter to which we passed it. I know here I use the arg. Uh, it should be default arguments. That's a typo. Don't worry about it. Uh, as, as I mentioned, these are the operators. Uh, as I mentioned, these are uh, parameters of operator and task constructor. So they still can be passed to the task constructor or the operators. Uh, for example, you can see in our default argument, we have a start date here and we have a start date in our task constructor too. Like if you look at here. Okay. So what happened in this situation? In this case, uh, the task operator parameter will override the default argument, which we already passed here. Okay. So today we're going to look into the parameters. Uh, we're going to look into these parameters only, but they can be more depending on your requirement, depending on like what kind of operator you are using. Okay. So we'll start with the first, uh, with the first parameter that is the owner, which is pretty intuitive with its name. And uh, it's really simple. Like basically owner is the, uh, is the owner of the task. So in our case, the owner of the task is Airflow. It can be uh, like your team name, your organization name, depending on like how you want to structure your DAGs. Okay. So the next parameters we want to talk about is the execution and the retries. In execution and retries, uh, basically three parameters we're going to discuss today. So one is dependent on the past. It's just a Boolean um, parameter. When it's set to true, the task instance are executed sequentially. And only if the previous instance either is successful or is skipped, then only the next event can be next task can be executed. Otherwise, it won't run. Retries, as the name says, is like the number of retries uh, the task should perform before uh, failing the task. So, for example, uh, let's say we copying a file or like we running a Python operator task. Uh, it's a it's running a function. So, how many times? Uh, we should retry before calling it as a failed task. So it's an integer, so it could be any number, like one, two, three, any whole numbers. Uh, re retry delay is uh, basically a, it's a time, uh, it's a time del delta parameter, and it basically tells the delays between the retries. So let's say if we have retry set to two and retry delay set to five minutes, if our like the first run fails, so our task will wait for another five minutes before retrying it, basically. The next parameters I want to talk about is the email. So email alerts can be sent when a task in a DAG is failed or even retried by setting the following uh, parameters. So email, email on retry, email on failure. So email is basically, uh, it's, a, it's a string type or the list of string where we store our email address to which we want to send the alerts. It can be single or multiple. Multiple always passed as a string, uh, as a list of strings. Uh, email on try, it's a Boolean uh, type. And when it's set to true, uh, then an email alert would be sent when a task is retried. And email on failure, 
uh, pretty same like it's a boolean to when it's set to true email alert will be sent when a task failure but here we have few things to keep in our mind the first one is uh, like we have to set up the smtp server uh, like it need to be configured on airflow in order to send the emails it's not like right away we put it email uh, for example or like gmail or something it won't work like we have to set up the smtp server on the airflow or it has to be configured uh, and email uh, and another thing is like if email on failure is set to true but email on retry is set to false email alert will be sent only if all retries of the task will fail but it won't send even like if tasks succeed on any retry. So for example, our retry, number of retries are four and our tasks succeeded on the third one, we won't be send any email about the failure. Okay, so next parameters, we uh, next we will look into the scheduling of the um, DAGs. So the first thing is uh, I wanna talk about the schedule interval, which is uh, pretty like, um, very simple like it's basically it defines how often the DAG runs and the values for the schedule interval can be passed as a crown expression as a string or or can be presets uh, which we can see in the below table so like basically if it is not set none it won't run if it is once like um, it will be runs so only one time and uh, the typical example for once will be uh, like our test environments or our dev environments where we want to run our DAG only once. And in production, it could be depending on the requirements, like it could be hourly, daily, weekly, or monthly. So these are the presets, like the first column is a preset and which depends like when it will run. And the second column, like it's just uh, defining, like for example, if it's hourly, like it runs every hour at the beginning of hour. And this is the crown, uh, like equivalent string for it. Okay. And now let's jump to the start date. So here things get a bit interesting, uh, but I'll still try to keep it simple. So in simple words, we can say it's the date at which a DAG will start being scheduled. So for example, like if our start date time is this and schedule interval set to daily, for a layman, it's basically a DAG will start on the 1st January of 2019 and it will run daily. But from Airflow perspective, like we need to understand this, the DAG will start still like 2019-01-01 and this like when the, like the start date and schedule interval is like that, it's actually executed at 2nd January midnight. So basically, the trigger point of our DAG is start date plus uh, interval schedule, the schedule interval. So if, uh, for example, like if it's, let's say it's 2022 first and uh, like as if it's January, like our start date is January 1st, 2022. And if it runs um, monthly, so it will run for first time on first, February 2022. I know it's kind of like, um, it doesn't go with the typical definitions of schedules and all, but this is how the airflow is designed. So basically the DAG will get executed in this case, like uh, on, uh, on the example which we're showing on the screen on 2nd January 2019 midnight. Because when it's daily, it means like uh, we're talking about midnight or we can see that the first run will kick on the midnight of 2019-02 and the execution date for this will be 1st January 2019. Sorry, this is a typo, it's not 2020, it's 2019. And this next run will be 3rd January midnight 2020 and the execution date will be 2nd January 2020. So execution date is like, um, it's, it's something we need to understand is basically is the beginning of the period for which DAG need to run. So for example, for this period, the beginning will be 1st January 2019. We will try to understand this with this uh, diagram, like it will be much easier. 
So here, like our start date is the 1st January 2019 midnight. And it's basically, it's, it's the same thing. Like this uh, example we will be taking here. This is like 1st January 2019 runs every day. And here, uh, this is our start date. And there have some, like some, um, some, some schedulings already happen. So on 2nd January, this is like just... On 2nd January 2019 midnight, this is the first time a DAG run. This will be the second run. This will be the third run. And if you look at this current, let's assume we we are in the uh, on the four, on the fourth January 2019. So in this case, our execution date will be the third January 2019, and our previous execution will be a day behind that, and the next will be. Uh, like the one day ahead of it. Hope it makes sense. Like execution date is like, don't uh, just think it as like a basic definition. It's the beginning of the period for which DAG need to be run. So if we, if you remember like the DAG, which is running on 4th January for that, actually it is running for this. So this is basically, it is triggering at this time, but it is running for the 3rd January. That's why the execution date is this. Because as I mentioned, like trigger point is a start date plus schedule interval. Okay, hope it makes sense. And the last is the end date. Um, uh, basically, a date beyond which our DAG won't run. And um, if you want uh, your scheduling to be an open ending, leave it to none. Okay, hope uh, you guys like the video. And uh, that's all for this. Um, thank you. Have a good one.